Pensacola High School, and I am glad that you all had a chance to come out and talk with us tonight and, and uh, look at next steps for IV and get some information and be able to ask questions. So sit back and relax as uh, our IV coordinator, Ms. Dickerson, takes you through our presentation along with Ms. Delio and Ms. Charles Christville. Before Ms. Dickerson comes up, I just want to introduce you all to Mr. Sean Roby, who is our new assistant principal here at this Thank you. Welcome, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me after your presentation. Ms. Dickerson. Behavior policy. Um, 
One thing we pride ourselves is, is being the Ivy program here at Pensacola High School and being a step above the rest. So we definitely want our students to represent us well. And so if there are major infractions or multiple smaller infractions, that can also lead to dismissal. Another aspect that I want to talk about is making sure that you are on time with your deadlines. We have internal assessments that are a part of all our, our classes um, and our six subject group areas, cash projects, creativity, activity, service, that's something that we'll go over a little bit more in depth and I'm sure you've heard plenty about thus far. Our extended essays and theory of knowledge, um, that within those classes there are things that are expected for students to turn in within certain time periods and if that does not occur that can also be means for dismissal. Um, students who are in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, they do not have to take certain classes that are required by all other students within the state of Florida on that 24-hour track. And so in order, to, uh, in order for the state to have agreed to that, there are certain things that our students must do, and that is all aspects of the IB program, which is inclusive of the internal assessment, CAS, the extended essay and TOK. So if students do not complete those things on time, they're considered to be out of compliance, and then we will have to move forward for removal in those instances. Um, Mrs. Leo will come up and start talking to you about the diploma curriculum. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Carter's bell is going to come up first, and then Ms. Leo will follow her. Good evening. Thank you all for coming out tonight. So I wanted to show you the IV circle here um, and go over the six IV groups because those we currently in ninth and tenth grade. Everything that we are doing with our classes for ninth and tenth grade is to prepare you for these future IV classes. Everything is scaffolded to prepare you. So when you enter into the IV program, junior year, we take six different groups. Um, Ms. Alika will go far more in depth with those. Um, we have group one, English, group two, foreign language, group three, our social studies, group four, sciences, group five, mathematics, and group six is called the arts, um, but there are other options with group six, and Ms. Alika will dive more into that. So again, I wanted to show you that so you can kind of see ninth and 10th graders why we do what we do with the classes we're taking. So for example, you are in pre-IB English 1, in your ninth grade, and so you will take AP Language and Composition next year as a sophomore. If you're currently a sophomore, you're taking that class in preparation for future IB classes. So there's a method to everything um, that we do here, everything is online. And I just want to also talk about this. Um, so with my current freshman, um, you are you know, rising 10th graders. Um, this is what your typical schedule is going to look like. You're going to take AP Lang. All will continue with your foreign language option. You'll take AP with history. You will take Florida Career ID Chemistry. And depending on the current math that you're in, perhaps you're going to Algebra 2, Algebra 2 Honors. Um, and you also all have two elective options for those of you who are going to be rising 10th graders. So for my rising 10th graders, we have a ton of options for y'all. We have many AP courses, but there are other classes for you to take, so pick what's best for you. What you are passionate about and what you are interested in. There are so, so many electives that we have here at Pensacola High School. I think we have like those gloves and extracurriculars um, in the county. So if you're passionate about your love journalism, hey, do it. If you're passionate about band, go for it. You want to do AP computer science? That's an option as well. So it's about you students. Um, I know it's sometimes it's tempting to follow your friends and what your friends are doing, and then you're like, this is so cliche, and it's hard for yourself. But I say it for a reason. Take what you want to take, what you're passionate about, because it happens every year. Students will come back to me, I didn't want to take this after all. It's not fun. I was chosen because my friend did it. Well, depending on when you come to me for schedule change, it might be too late at that point, and you have to take it. So just Words of wisdom there for you. And also, a friendly reminder, we do have awesome career academies here at Pensacola High School. So some of our IB students, I know, take these classes. Um, 
the culinary, you know, we have sports medicine academy, social media, you know, childhood education, health science, um, and construction as well. So you are welcome here to take you know, those classes if you are interested in that. So I wanted to touch on the exams real quick when it comes to AP. So just a refresher, because I know that you just have probably talked about this with the students, I want to um, reiterate this. So with AP exams, they go on a scale of one to five. Okay, three is passing, three and above is passing. Um, and so three and above, you know, you can earn college credit with that. Potentially, it just depends on the university, you know, what exactly they award with that score for the university. Um, so I may need universities to use these scores to determine admissions. Um, there's like an example here, like an A, but even a five is considered like an A, a four is considered a B, and so on. So you save these students because take these scores seriously, take your AP exams and your AP courses seriously. And plus the AP classes you're taking, they prepare you um, for AP classes you're taking in the future. They're also preparing them for the university, future career as well. So you do the best you can with them. Okay, and then you know, words of wisdom for you, finding balance amongst your challenging classes. Make sure you have a manageable workload. This is very key um, when it comes to, you know, feeling that success, feeling like, okay, I'm not so stressed because I am balanced. All of you are different. You know you best and what your workload is like, what your time management skills are. Um, so when it comes to choosing your active workload, just be mindful of like, what is best for me and what I can do. Um, if you struggle with the workload now, it's not advised to take on more challenging workload. Um, and so you're welcome to talk to me if you want to send me an email, set an appointment maybe to kind of reflect on some of this a little bit more. If you're being careful of trying to balance your classes, we can certainly do that. Happy to do so. Again, don't select classes your friends are taking. Um, select a schedule that, yes, is challenging. What about you and your interests? and your goals that you're set for success there. And I will be coming into classes for current ninth graders, our rising 10th graders, and we'll talk more about that when it comes to balancing your electives and things like that. But at this time, I'm going to introduce Ms. Alethea, and she's going to talk more information about IV courses for 11th and 12th grade. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, my name is Gloria Alethea. I'm the Ivy College Counselor here at Pensacola High School. And I wanted to make sure I had a chance to speak with parents about um, those 11 and 12th grade subjects and choosing new subjects, especially as an Ivy College counselor. Choosing these subjects can help you really prepare to the right subjects and help you really prepare for your future major or your future career. So we want to make sure we talk through all the options. There are lots of options um, and lots of different combinations that students can use. Um, but it has to be within certain parameters. So as Ms. Powers herself spoke about earlier, this is our lovely IB curriculum. We have six subject areas as well as the core. So once you get into junior year, after your induction, you finish your part of the diploma program, and you do need to be taking courses in each of these subject areas. So um, group one is the easiest. It's English. I mean, that's very typical for any American program, is that everybody takes English all four years. Um, and our students are taking um, a group two language acquisition. So our students will either take French or Spanish. We'll talk about the different options. Um, for French and Spanish, group three. Um, we have three different options for our social studies group, um, if you would like to call it that. Um, we also have three different options for our sciences group, um, which many IB programs do not have all three options, so we're very fortunate to have all three. Um, group five is the math option. It's the most fun option to look at the track score, so we'll have fun looking at that. Uh, and then group six is the arts, or what we like to call the electives section. So there's a lot of different ways that students can utilize the group six option um, to best fit their needs and what they're going to study in the future. So first, I want to talk about higher level versus standard level. This might be something you've already heard about. Um, this is something that you need to consider before picking your courses. And again, I'll be in the classes with the uh, rising juniors or our current sophomores in this Ozella's class on Friday, and we will talk about this again. Students have to have at least three higher level IB courses. Uh, we'll talk about what those options are in just a minute, but they have to have at least three higher level options, so please don't forget that. 
Um, and if, if you have six subject areas, um, um, what you would have left is just three standard level options. Um, there is an option for students to take four higher level um, if you're really wanting to challenge yourself um, and, and um, have that really rigorous track. Um, then you could take four higher level. Um, again, you do need to know yourself, find the balance, and make sure that you're doing what's best for you. Um, so if you take four higher level, then you have two standard level courses. So what's the difference? Um, the IB curriculum is based off of um, the British system, so uh, with higher level standard level in terms of um, those courses. Um, there's no difference in the quality of instruction, it's simply the, the hours, the instructional hours that students are receiving. Um, so for our HL courses, all of our HL courses are two years in length. Um, I think it's really nice that for our, most of our IB courses, especially junior and senior year, you get to have your teachers um, well, more often than not for two years in a row. It's a great way to build those relationships with teachers. Um, for our standard level courses, we have standard level courses that are one year or two years. Um, it depends on the course and um, the way the class is set up in order to make sure you guys are successful for those exams. So again, from this slide, please remember you need at least three higher level options. Um, you can afford to need at least three. So these are higher level options for six standard level options. Um, we have um, IB English, that's going to be taken by all students. So that means for, for you, um, one of those higher level options is going to be taken by IB English. So just be ready for that in your planning. Um, IB History is also an option. Um, we'll talk about how to get there with the prerequisites later. IB Business Management is an option. IB Biology and Chemistry are also higher level options as well as Physics. Um, so we do have our sciences, there are um, options for higher level. Uh, IB Visual Arts um, is another option. So um, if you are more uh, on the creative side, there are higher level options for you. Um, and then we also have IB Higher Level Theater, um, which is uh, it's a really wonderful program. There are things that they do for their portfolios and their uh, for their internal systems. It's just something excellent. Um, we also have um, Spanish higher level. Um, so for students that have taken Spanish 1 already in their middle school years, um, this is an option for you as long as you're taking through any Spanish in ninth grade. Standard level options. Um, we have IB Spanish or French, IB History there's a standard level option, Math Applications um, uh, is, is an option as well. Um, it's more of the stats option. We'll talk a little bit more about the differences between the math tracks. I think that's what a lot of students kind of think about and contemplate as they're um, filling up with course cards. Um, we also have just IB Math Analysis, excuse me for that. So IB Math Analysis SL. Um, students can either take IB Math Analysis 2 in their senior year or even their, their junior year. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and they can test out their junior year um, with SL, um, or they would take IB Math Analysis to their senior year. Um, another option for students who are currently in Algebra 2, um, they can take BC Calc um, uh, in their junior year and then have an open math, math elective, so those are options as well. Um, IB Geography is a one year standard level course. Most of our students take that in their junior year. And there's IB Visual Arts standard level, IB Theater. Um, we can also take an additional Group one, like I said, simplest group. Um, all of our students actually um, in Florida Fair and English one. Um, we all have Miss Charlotte, um, and so that's for our ninth graders. In tenth grade, you take AP English Language and Composition with uh, Miss Bozell, um, who's been uh, teaching that class for a long time and really preparing students. Um, in eleventh grade, all of you will take. AP English Literature, which also serves as the IB English um, Higher Level Year One class. So, um, along with preparing you for that AP uh, Literature, AP English Literature exam, uh, we also are making sure that students are meeting the requirements and, and doing the things that they need to do in order to be ready for Year Two of Higher Level of English. And so, 12th grade, you will all take IB English Higher Level. So, super simple. Group two, you have two options. Um, we have French or Spanish, and you can do Spanish um, standard level or higher level. Uh, and then we also have French standard level. So the different options. Uh, again, we're going to put this on the website. Uh, I do like this track and how it was 
um, created. It's not the lightest visual. Um, we use it for many years. I think it's helpful for our parents. Um, this is not the best format for you. Um, we do have it written down in other forms. Um, but this just shows you the progression, right? What are you um, needing to do to get to that end goal? Um, so for this first column over here, we have students who take Spanish 1 in middle school. So you have some students that do that. Um, then they show that they're qualified already um, through assessment for um, pre id Spanish 2 in their freshman year. Um, so just because you took Spanish 1 in middle school doesn't mean you have to start with pre id Spanish 2 if you don't feel ready. Um, but uh, that is an option for you. So ninth grade, um, if you are currently in pre id Spanish 2 next year, you'll be taking pre id Spanish 3, um, which uh, students who are also in ID Spanish 4 are taking the same content. So that would be next year uh, if you're a current um, ninth grader. If you are a sophomore that's currently in pre ID Spanish 3 next year, you have to um, you have um, uh, ID Spanish 5 that you would take. Uh, and you have two options after that. So uh, if you're in 11th grade and you are in uh, ID Spanish 5, you can either test out or take the exam that year and have an open elective, so you can see that here, or you can take any course, any elective that's available at the ages. That's an open elective for you. A lot of students who are strategizing who maybe want to take orchestra again, or who maybe want an AP elective, um, or who uh, maybe want to um, just have, you know, uh, maybe a, a simpler um, senior year, more relaxing senior year to make sure they can focus on getting all those IAs done. Um, that's, a, that's a great option to have that open elective. Or if you really love languages, um, one of your higher levels would be IB um, higher level Spanish. So there's two options for you um, in terms of whether or not you take the HL as self exam if you start out taking Spanish in middle school. Um, certainly, if anything is confusing, please raise your hand. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions. So um, I would say the majority of our students fall into these other two tracks. Um, most students are starting off with pre id Spanish 1 or pre id French 1. Um, and from there, in your 10th grade year, you would move on to uh, pre id Spanish 2 or pre id, uh, pre -ID French 2. And then from there, um, we would go on to uh, what we call um, ID Spanish 4. Um, we skip that number, it's really kind of like the, the third year, right, of that course. It's the same class as you can see from the, what's listed here. I know maybe in the back you can't see it, but I will post it on the website. And then uh, when, once you get to your 12th grade year, that's when um, you would take IB Spanish 5 or IB French 5, and that's where in your senior year you would test at that standard level. Okay. Um, again, if, I'm, uh, if I am taking IB Spanish 3 as a sophomore, so we do have some of those students in this room, um, what are the options? So, like I said, we have the visual, and this is it right now. Um, you can either test out a SL, um, Spanish SL in your junior year and have it open elected. So that's one option. And the other option is to take um, Spanish both junior and senior year and do the higher level exam in your senior year. So again, you want to make sure that you're thinking about how many higher levels and senior levels that you have. That you need at least three higher levels, one of those being English. We have had this question um, with some of our students, um, you know, maybe have a passion for the arts, for sciences, um, instead of the languages, we, we always get this question um, you know, from a, a student or two every year. Um, is there another option um, for a, a, a language that I could take uh, for the, the uh, language acquisition or the, the world languages group? Um, the answer is far, so we do not have any other options. You have to take French or Spanish. Um, we find that it's um, really helpful for students to be taking languages. Um, one, uh, we need uh, colleges are wanting students to have that language preparation. Um, some colleges require that students take languages at their university, and so you can actually test out of those languages depending on the exams where that you get. So we really think it's important for our students to be exposed to languages, especially with us being the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, and so long being exposed to those languages, you're being exposed to multiple cultures. Group three, individuals in society. So most people know this is social studies. American students all take social studies classes. Um, you have um, 
for your group three, you can pick one of the following options. You can either do this as management higher level. We do have a senior level history option, so that's what for that um, type of history. Um, history standard level, higher level that you can take, but both history standard level and higher level are two year courses. So be aware of that when you're picking up your classes. Um, geography standard level is only one year. So that would free up students and help them up to the following year. There are no prerequisites for these courses prior to your junior year. So we love our, we love our charts. Chart. Um, so all of our ninth grade students, you are currently an AP Human Geography. This is definitely a, a rigorous course for carry you for whichever track you're on. Um, but we, we want you to be building those research skills. In 10th grade, all of our grad students take AP U.S. History. Um, we find that the exposure to AP U.S. History, um, some colleges really want to have students taking U.S. History. Um, and so we, we find that this is a great option for our students. And then below here, for 11th and 12th grade, we have three different options. It's listed here. So the business management shop, we do have students take um, business management and their um, internal assessments are really interesting to partner with businesses um, and, and work to solve problems, um, real world problems with businesses. So a great uh, applications, a real world applications class. Um, so junior year, you would take IB business management one. And then in 12th grade, you would take IB business management three. History, if you want to take either standard level or higher level history. Um, you would start with AP European History in your junior year. Um, so you can both get, get exposure and possibly gain credits to uh, the, the AP European History course, um, but you're also getting preparation for that um, IB Contemporary History at your standard level or higher level exam. If that's the route you choose in your senior year, you would um, then take IB Contemporary History one or two. And that would know what I was doing in the standard level at the end. So um, I make contemporary history one would be for standard level. Uh, I make contemporary history two would be for the higher level exam. And then finally, we have geography, which the only option is that it's standard level and a one year course. So if you're using that as one of your standard level options, make sure that you have enough higher levels. Um, so you would take ge IB geography in your junior year and you would test in your junior year. And then in your senior year, you would have an open elective to take whatever course you would like to take. And we have lots of great social studies options, but of course we have some students that have interests elsewhere and can use that open elective to their advantage. Sciences. Lots of great options for sciences. Um, we find lots of students are looking to prepare for the medical field or engineering. Um, so picking the right class within the sciences, I think, um, definitely sets you up for success within that future major. So you have to choose one of the options for sciences. Again, every student has to pick an option within each of the six subjects. So we have students um, choose either biology standard level or higher level, chemistry standard level or higher level, um, or physics standard level or higher level. Um, there are additional prerequisites required for physics um, and for um, you know, any other classes, uh, depending on how many students that decide they want to do this course will determine whether or not we have that course available. So, um, we'll talk about prerequisites for physics in just a moment, but I do want to say that we have some students that consider doubling up um, in higher level um, sciences, um, and that certainly is an option, especially if you're looking at really selective, really rigorous universities um, in the STEM fields or the you know, medical field. Um, I would definitely recommend it for that case. But um, we want to make sure students, again, are being balanced and they're not overworking themselves. Um, because what does happen is that there are a lot of lab options. Uh, there are a lot of lab write-ups and things that students have to do within these science courses. And so this do take time. Um, it's great preparation for um, college-level work. Um, we want to make sure, again, students are taking the best track for them, both for their future career goals as well as their, their mental health and their own personal well-being. So these um, are the different science tracks. Uh, we have biology and chemistry in this tree over here because all students are exposed to both biology and chemistry. All pre-ID ninth grade students take biology, uh, pre-ID biology in their ninth grade year. As sophomores, you all take um, photo pre-ID chemistry. 
So, um, which I left science chapter in, that's again the same for all students. Once you get to your 11th grade degree, so you start um, having to make some considerations. Um, for the biology track, um, higher level. So if you want to choose biology, it's one of your higher level options. I mean, I would recommend this for students that are considering, um, you know, the medical field or health services. In 11th grade, we take ID Biology 1 to get you prepared um, for higher level in the first year of the higher level course. 12th grade, we have ID Biology 3 in 12th grade. So again, if you're wanting to do a higher level biology option, you would start off with ID Biology 1 in your junior year, and then go on to ID Biology 3 in your senior year. Another option that our students like to have is maybe science is it one of the passions, or maybe they're wanting to make room for additional sciences or other um, options um, throughout their high school career? We do have IB Biology Standard Level. Um, it's our only one year science standard level option. Okay? It's our only one year IB science option. So you, again, we start off with our prerequisites for 9th and 10th grade. In your junior year, you would take IB Biology 2. And then you'll test out. And then your senior year, you have an option um, for another elective. So again, these are all things to think about and strategize. Um, and think about that, again, that four-year plan when you're going to take throughout all four years of high school. Okay, so those are the two options for biology. With chemistry, you have, again, these are prerequisites. In your junior year, you would take IB Chemistry 1. So whether or not you're doing standard level or higher level, all students in their junior year taking chemistry, IB Chemistry, would uh, take the IB Chemistry 1 class, which is going to carry you for senior year, for you to determine whether or not you're doing the standard level route, um, which would be IB Chemistry 2, or the higher level route, which is IB Chemistry 3. I would say the differences with those exams, yes, they're um, both chemistry, standard level, and higher level are two years. Um, the differences with those exams at the end of the year, um, there's more exams or papers for higher level than there are standard level typically. Um, so that is a consideration to make um, in choosing those different uh, course options, even though they're both two years. Okay? Any questions about biology and chemistry before I move on to this? Yes. Is there a marine science? There is not a marine science degree, unfortunately, not at all. Okay. I would say if they're looking for AP environmental science, but excuse me, environmental science is major, I would do a biology track and take AP environmental science along the way. Physics. So physics has some prerequisites if you're wanting to get to the higher level uh, option. Again, all of our students take what if we had biology in the freshman year? So that's, everybody takes that. Um, it's also required that in 10th grade, all of our students take what if we had chemistry. Um, if you're wanting to get to the higher level um, option, um, you will have to take AP Physics 1 in your sophomore year. So if you're a current freshman and that's something you're thinking about, um, we may go look at the course card and determine if that's going to be your other elective. Um, if you do still want to take an IB Physics option, Right, um, standard level or higher level, you haven't taken AP physics in your sophomore year, there's still options for you. I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're wanting to do higher level, um, you will have to take AP physics one in your sophomore year. In your junior year, uh, if you're taking a higher level option, you would take IP physics one. In your senior year, maybe you decide you don't want to do um, IP physics um, higher level, maybe you want to do standard level. Um, in your senior year, you would take um, you could have the option to take either IB Physics 2, which is the standard level option, or IB Physics 3, which is the higher level option. Okay. Let's say, for instance, you know, they're a sophomore year and haven't taken AB Physics yet, um, but you're wanting to take an IB Physics course. Um, I think that's really important for you. Um, there are options still available. So what you can do if you want to take IB Physics standard level in your senior year, you can actually take AP Physics 1 next year to get that prerequisite knowledge and possibly earn college credit for that AP exam. And then in your senior year, you would take IP physics too. Any questions about physics? Yes. I, earlier I saw that it, it appears as if higher level math has been eradicated. That's no longer a path for them to get one of the three higher levels. Yep, and we'll, yes, we'll 
So my concern is there's upper level students that they're saying that teachers are claiming that IP physics uh, higher level is also disappearing. Uh, the issue was that we didn't have enough interest. Uh, we can't justify having a course if there's only three students wanting to take it, unfortunately. But if we start locking ourselves into a system that's a four-year plan, and we don't have enough higher level paths, what does that do to the student? We have dealt with that in the past, and so we make sure we provide enough options and reward. I know it doesn't necessarily help um, in terms of planning at this current moment, but we're not going to let a student not qualify for an IV diploma. So um, we work with our students, we work with our teachers to get them what they need to talk. Does that mean providing them the class that they need, or does that mean pushing them into higher level theater or something else? It, I mean, it depends on what's available. So um, again, we want to make sure we have students that have um, interests, right? We um, can't just have a class for IV because um, it's higher level, unfortunately. Because um, we have to have three higher levels. Right. So we have to. Are there any other higher level courses potentially on the chopping block that we need to be concerned with? Uh, not, not that I know. So I mean. But that is a time. I mean, <laughs> as is the nature of any public school, any private school, right? Um, so uh, we are doing our best to, you know, make sure that we're, we're planning. Um, and we also talk with students about alternative scenarios. Um, but um, those two courses, I would say, are, um, as you put it, on the chopping block because we have very few students that tend to take those options. Um, so that's um, something that, that comes up. So um, I would say with our other options, we don't have that um, issue in the same regard. We're able to, like, for our theater and art classes, we're able to combine them later. Um, groups, we're, we're able to make it work for our other courses. Um, with physics and in math, um, it's a matter of interest. Um, and but is that, is that a problem with the people that are in the program interested, or is that just the fact that the numbers in IT are totally down? I would say this is an issue with uh, numbers in IT are totally down. I would say this is an issue with um, what I'm doing. That's how it's using normally hold, so obviously that makes it more difficult to plug some of these upper level classes. Right. And higher level, and higher level math is relatively low. And higher level physics. But you've always maintained it. Right, I mean, we have more than three students wanting to take it. So that's always an issue this year. I'll talk about the math options before. Actually, the math options are better for students um, than it has been in the past um, in terms of our American system. Um, and I think we're doing what's the best option for students moving forward, especially with math. Um, I do hear you and understand the frustration with physics, especially with trying to plan, right? You're, you're uh, three versus four higher levels, especially when you're trying to do. You've done the work ahead of time, probably since eighth grade, figuring it out. So I understand that frustration, um, but unfortunately, we can't predict, um, we can't predict certain things. So we have our students' best interests at heart, and we will make sure that they're meeting the requirements um, for the board for our ID, the ID of the That's a great question. So again, we like to have our visual as well as things written out. Um, we will talk about the math option in just a moment. I know a lot of people are very curious about that. Um, within your 11th grade year, again, everybody has to take a class within each of the six subjects. Um, biology, again, this is written out for you. You can see it in a visual format, so I'm not going to go through that again. Um, we, again, we'll have this listed on the website for you to see um, for yourselves. And I will be seeing all of our sophomores, um, rising juniors, on Friday. I want to make sure we got the picture that they wanted. This is the physics option. Can, can I just ask about the physics? Mm -hmm. If my son is interested in that, should I steer him away from that since he may not be able to continue? I, depending on what kind of major he's looking into, we want to make sure he gets exposure to physics. So um, I can I can talk with specific about um, what he's going to do as his future career and what options he's going to have. Okay. Math. And this is definitely the, the new option, right? So um, a couple years ago, um, they changed the math curriculum. Um, this last year was the first year that students were assessed on this new math curriculum. And it caused a lot of other people, right, and what was typically done previously, right? So um, I think that's why we have parents and students have lots of questions about that. Um, there's been changes to what credits are offered at our American universities, especially our Florida State University. 
Um, and so I think this move away from higher level um, into a dual enrollment option is actually going to be in the best interest of our students. So um, we'll go through the different tracks. Obviously, if you're not in that high level mode, um, you know, there are other options for you. You don't have to be a math whiz um, to do well. Um, you know, math doesn't have to be your favorite subject um, in order to do well on the IB math exams. There are options for all students. So we want to make sure that students are picking the best option for them in their career goals. So we have math application standard level. Um, this is, I would say, um, more of a statistics option. Um, all of our math options are very integrated and have components of calculus as well as statistics in them. Um, so that was one of the major changes that happened. I would say math applications has, uh, was more rigorous than its uh, predecessor. Um, so that's one of the options for students. I would say if you're a student that's wanting to go more into the arts, um, maybe uh, just the creative um, finance, um, this might be more of the option for you um, if you're not, um, you know, again, math isn't your favorite subject. Uh, we also have math analysis standard level. Um, and there are several different options for math analysis standard level that we'll talk about. Um, again, for all of our students um, uh, that are not taking that application option, um, they would test out, um, they would test um, the math analysis standard level option. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, if you test out a math analysis standard level in your, uh, in your junior year, so um, this is typically the students that are on the higher level option, or maybe they just want to test out early because they took Algebra one geometry in, in middle school. Um, we have the option of either students having um, AB statistics. Um, so again, maybe you don't love, love math, but you're wanting to still show colleges that you're serious about your studies, and you have that four, fourth year of, of high school math. Um, AB stats might be a great option for you. Um, for our students that are wanting to go beyond health too, so I think that's the major concern, right? We have students that are on the third growth track, and they have these aspirations to be really competitive for colleges and universities that have these STEM fields. We want to make sure they're getting um, the best education for them. Um, unfortunately, with math higher level, uh, math analysis higher level, um, I would say the credits that were being given um, for that didn't equate to the work or the, um, the level of math that our students were taking at that point, um, especially out of Florida public universities. Um, there is a disconnect, unfortunately, between uh, the, the IB math curriculum and um, what um, the Florida um, State University System Board of Governors uh, thinks that students should be earning for credit, right? Um, there's a major disconnect there. I mean, you can look it up, and, and, and I don't think it equates what our person should be. So uh, I think the best option for students, and we think the best option for students is to have a dual enrollment option um, that goes beyond cal calculus two and calculus three. Um, and for any students that are concerned about, well, I'm taking a dual enrollment course, but I'm looking at out of state options, um, I would say um, whether students are looking at really rigorous courses outside of the state of Florida, they're concerned about what, the, what dual enrollment looks like, right, versus IB. Um, this is our curriculum that we use um, in college application process. We submit what is called a school profile that shows all the classes we offer and shows the tracks that our students are able to take, right? Um, and the possible limitations that those students have, right? So if we don't, you know, for whatever reason, um, have a higher level option for physics, right? Um, or some concerns that people have, we would know that in that school profile that that isn't an option. Your student is still taking the most rigorous options available to them, and that and colleges and universities understand that school to school, um, not every school has the same resources. We're really lucky we have all three sciences. Um, we're really lucky um, to have the math options that we have. So um, just know that, especially as the college counselor, we are trying to set up our students for success, um, both um, to be selected at um, you know, those highly selected universities, as well as just being prepared for those majors. So let's get to the, the, the chart. Um, it's really fun for math. Lots of great options. <laughs> and there's lots of movement that can happen. Right? They just know um, that math is not a higher level option. Okay? Um, for students that have, um, most of our students are starting with geometry honors. Um, if you're a student that's ninth grade that's already in algebra, um, you should be, um, that's currently algebra, excuse me, you should be already starting with geometry, 
right? Or in your sophomore year, taking both geometry and algebra too. Okay? Um, so most of our students are within this, this realm. Right? We do have more and more students that are getting here, but there's lots of options. Lots of options to do. Okay? So again, most of our ninth grade graduate students start out um, in geometry honors. From there, they can either take algebra two honors or regular algebra two. So Ida will work in terms of getting to that uh, IV track, uh, IV exam later on. All right, so I'm going to start with this first little branch of our tree, for clarity's sake, as clear as we can make it. There's mine. Um, tenth grade, we have algebra two honors. Um, that's the class you're taking. So your current tenth graders in the algebra two honors. You have two different options. You can either in eleventh grade take IV math analysis one. Which is again a pretty interdisciplinary map. I would say um, this is uh, uh, more akin uh, or more um, suited for students that are looking to study the world, right? It has a little bit more calculus. Uh, so um, then um, then math application does, right? Um, so I do math analysis. With one, we would take 11th grade. Uh, in 12th grade, we would take I do math analysis two and test standard level. The other option if you're currently in Algebra 2 Honors is to take IV and Calculus. So that in your senior year, you can take AV, Calculus, VC, which is akin to uh, Calculus 2. But you would also, in terms of that, you'd be preparing for the IV Math Analysis 2 standard level of It would be the same exam, but you'd be preparing for both. And I think that this maximizes the credits for our students be able to take the AP Calculus and C exam, as well as the um, IV Math Analysis standard level exam. Right? So those are the two options um, if you are currently in Algebra 2, uh, if you are currently in Algebra 2 on If you are currently in Algebra 2 regular, regular Algebra 2, your option that you would have uh, in your sophomore year is to, be, to take IV Math Applications 1 as a junior, and then take IV Math Applications, oh, excuse me, IV Math Applications 1 as a, as a junior. And all my clubs will probably put on the website. Uh, in your 12th grade year, you would take IV Math Applications 2. Okay, so if you're currently in Algebra 2 regular, your only option is to take IV Math Applications. And I would again say this is for students who are looking at liberal arts um, degrees or looking at finance, um, but that doesn't mean if you love theater, you can't take do, do what you're passionate about. All right. Our other option, I would say this is not as common, but if you're currently as a ninth grader in Algebra 2 honors, you have lots of options. Lots of options. As a 10th grader, you could take um, IV Math Analysis 1. So that would be that first year in preparing to test out of math in your junior year. So yeah, ninth grade you take if you're currently in Algebra 2 honors. Tenth grade you take IV Math Analysis 1. In junior year you take IV Math Analysis 2 and test out. Again, testing out what that means that students are taking their exams in junior year, which allows them to have this open up elective, uh, which could be AV stats. Uh, I would recommend students take math all four years, especially um, for the more competitive for colleges. But um, technically you could take just an elective. But I would highly recommend an elective. Um, for uh, students who want to go into that, uh, what was known as a parallel track uh, for math analysis, um, but um, what we would say is beyond top two, right? Um, as a sophomore, you take IV calculus, be preparing for the BC top class the following year in your junior year, and you would also test out in that same math analysis class, um, math analysis standard level exam. Okay? You would test out in the following year, we have a dual enrollment math option if you wanted to go beyond top two, or you could take AP stats. Yes? Do you have to take AP stats or dual enrollment, or do you just have a regular open elective? You can have a regular open elective. I would highly recommend taking a math option. Um, if you, I, I would say it's more competitive um, for college applications to have math all four years. Uh, but yes, you could have an open elective option. Yes? I'm just curious, if you 
fill the uh, bottom 12 grade, second box, ATBC Cal, but if you're taking the faster accelerator route, you're just doing BC Cal, why aren't you allowed to take the ATBC? I think it's a typo. Okay. So, um, can you repeat the question? So, if you take geometry, algebra 2, IB, pre Cal, and mm -hmm. then you go uh, AP, BC Cal, yes. and the SL exam, mm -hmm. you do the faster route, algebra 2 going to IB, pre Cal, and you're taking BC Cal, why wouldn't you do at the same time. It is, it's, it's ATPC. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I thought that's what it's No, no, no. I mean, that's what we're going to answer those questions. Absolutely. So, so it would be akin to that track, right? Yes. So you would still be taking the same SL exam, IV math analysis, whether you yes. take AP, Cal, or not? Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The other option is just not many students do.
students of different strengths to, to take and choose what's best for them. So um, not only do we have elective options like art standard level or higher level or theory, theater standard level or higher level, but we also have um, uh, the option for students to take an additional group two through four. Um, and again, group two is a language acquisition group, so maybe we love languages. We do have students that are really interested in that. Um, we could have another language course um, that you would test in for IB. Um, group three is the individuals inside a society to a social studies course. You could double up in social studies, or you can double up in science. These are the different six subject options that are not the uh, fine arts options. So typically for um, the uh, six persons who are going to have a little bit more wiggle room um, for maybe sciences or other options, they have IV geography um, that they can take in their junior year and test out. Um, so that could be a, a, a group six for you. You may be able to take IV history for your social studies group or group three, um, or you're taking uh, business management. But for your group six, you want to you know, do geography and, and test out on some options. You can do IB business management higher level. There's no prerequisites. Um, as your group six, you can double up again in those um, social studies. <coughs> There's also, um, and then you can take an additional science. Okay? And then, like I said, take an additional language. Um, we do want to make sure that students can see the different options for languages, because let's say, for instance, you're you know, a freshman and maybe you're thinking another you know, language for a group six would be a great option. So you want to go through that and I'll have the tracks up in just a moment. So options for group six if you want to do an additional language. Um, let's say, for instance, um, you know, uh, you're a freshman and you're taking both French and Spanish this year. You're in a great position to take both French and Spanish um, standard level um, and have one of those be your group six and one of those be your group two in your senior year. Well, let's say, for instance, you're sitting here and you're a current, um, you know, you're a current freshman, um, you're only taking one language, or you're a current sophomore, um, and you're thinking, maybe I do want another language as my group six. That's something I'm interested in. There are options. So for your group six, um, you have um, for 10th grade, um, say you're a current freshman, you want to do a, uh, you know, uh, a group six option um, and have three years in traditional language. You can actually start with Florida Grade in Spanish or French one next year, then go to what we call French or Spanish ab initio. And it's just to note students that haven't had four years in the language. That'd be uh, French or Spanish ab initio one. And then in the 12th grade year, you would take, you would test in that ab initio standard level in standing. And this would just be for a group six option. So this would be for students who are taking, uh, or students who may be um, transferred in um, with that ab initio option. But for most students for the group six option, um, you would, in conjunction with taking an additional language, you have to make it to testing. Um, there's also the option of, you know, maybe you're a sophomore right now, like I said, um, and you want to have that other language, in your junior year, you can essentially take what would be like a French or Spanish year one, and then in your senior year, test um, in the auto initio French or Spanish standard level of exam. I knew you knew this, but. Good evening, parents and families. We want to thank you for participating in our Tiger Showcase. We hope that you learned a lot of great information and This will be available on the website. I can show your patients. It has all the different options. <coughs> Cross registration is just when we're going to the classes. Ms. Thomas for Skeleton will be seeing our current sophomores tomorrow. I will be seeing the current 10th graders on Friday. And I will be seeing our juniors, um, our current juniors, who will be seniors next year on Wednesday. Of course, our class will all be due on March 4th, so we'll be about a week to get those done. We'll talk about all these tracks in an event convoluted and, and, and you know, uh, but we're here to untangle the mess. Okay, and this presentation will again be on the agent website. We will need signatures for certain level courses. 
Um, in the past, we didn't have these signatures, and students were taking maybe courses that weren't, they weren't quite ready for, so we do want to have that teacher input. Um, certainly, the students advocate for themselves, and sit down and talk to the teacher. We can possibly um, talk about you know, maybe doing that higher level option, or the, excuse, the more rigorous option, excuse me. Um, but we want to make sure students are doing what's best for them based off the teacher um, input. Signatures are also required for certain AP courses. Um, again, we want to make sure students are qualified and the requisites. They're also required for courses like SGA. And all of that will be indicated on your course card. I need hands and I need diploma. So um, we just want to make sure that I know it's already seven minutes, so, um, but I do want to make sure that students understand the higher level versus standard level, how many points they need, uh, and all those components, because this is what you're working all four years for. Uh, and students who do get the IDF formula automatically get the top tier of the Bright Future Scholarship, which is equivalent to 100% um, tuition at any public university in the state of Florida. So we do want to make sure students are prepared for that. And um, some universities will provide, um, it's simply based off of the diploma and maximum credits, um, and they also do provide um, scholarships specifically for Ivy diploma candidates. So with the Ivy exams, oops, sorry. Something that we think is really good um, about IB that is different from AP, there's an internal assessments component. I'm sure you've all heard your juniors and seniors talk about internal assessments. This is something you do within the classroom. The teachers grade it themselves. They send um, a select amount of internal assessments to then be moderated by external moderators, um, and then you are awarded a score um, based off of that moderation. So this is part of the final grade with your exams. There's the internal assessment component as well as the external assessment component, which I think most students are familiar with because they've taken AP exams before. That would be an exam to take the end of the year. How to earn an ID diploma? Again, the student component is internal and external. Um, there are no makeup ID exams. They're just hard. Um, uh, the, the former coordinator would talk about how she would sit with people in the back of the room while they were growing up. Um, they're just not very flexible on that. Um, and so we just want to make sure you guys know from the get go there are new AP exams. Okay. This is the assessment breakdown. I'm not going to go into too many details, but just for you to see that your overall score, which you should then use to get credits at colleges and universities, it's not just comprised of that high stakes exam that you take at the very end of the year. There's also that internal assessment that you're getting guidance with from your teachers that also comprises part of that score, which I think is a great benefit to our students. Additional assessment breakdowns. And again, we will be posting this to the website. We'll send an email that to the website as well. Okay. Earning the ID diploma, we want to make sure that students are going to get enough points. There are six subjects. Um, you get scored on a 1 through 7 instead of a 1 through 5, like AP. We want to make sure students are earning enough higher level points. Um, again, they have to have at least three higher levels, but we want to make sure they're earning 12 points in those higher levels. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, uh, so I would say, excuse me, let me preface that. I would say um, a passing score is a four. So essentially, the idea is wanting you to pass all of your higher level IB exams. But let's say, for instance, you have you know, a five on one and a three on another, and you have four on the other. You could still have 12, 12 higher points for that. So there are, there are options in that regard. So we do have some students that take four higher level options. Um, I'd be going to look at your top three. So we have had some students in the past think, well, if I take four higher level exams and 12 higher level points, I'll just get a three on all of them. I don't have to pass all of them. That's not the case. They're going to look at your top three. So in this first example, we have a student take four higher levels. They're in a five on English, a four on history, four on ten, three on bio. And again, the four is passing. And so they have a total of 15 higher level points. And they're excluding those higher level points from bio. Example two, um, they have their four different courses. Um, they didn't do quite as well, right? Um, so again, they have combined all of the points from those higher levels, even though the person took four higher level courses. Um, they're just taking the top three. So this student earned 11 higher level points who's not qualified for diploma. 
we would say uh, of, of the reasons why students don't qualify for the diploma, it's not having enough higher level points, and that's just you know making sure you prepare for those exams and work with your teachers, do the study sessions, make sure you're taking your eyes seriously, um, and do that. But we, we have an overall high pass rate and um, high diploma rate, so um, uh, a few students don't fall in that category. Really quick, the center in the circle. Um, so in addition to those exams, we do have to meet the requirements for the center that in the circle. I think it's really about that students get an extended essay, get an knowledge class, and pay to the activity in service. The extended essay is an independent research paper that we do in your junior year, so all students will be taking IB Theory of Knowledge 1 in their junior year, and they'll take IB Theory of Knowledge 2 in their senior year. Um, theory of Knowledge 1 in your junior year, you have a whole class to work on a 4,000 word independent research paper. It's a great opportunity to build those research skills now while you get guidance from your teachers as well as supervisors. So make sure you're using that class time wisely. Um, I did have enrollments on the one this program in the early 2000s, and they had to do this paper over the summer with limited guidance. So I think um, the fact that we have this class to provide guidance to students is wonderful, um, and it really um, helps our students earn um, great grades in those um, extended essays. We haven't had anybody earn an E since we got the class. So um, something that an extended essay can actually do is help you earn bonus points for the diploma. Fine arts, and if some students are like, I, I'm not artistic, I don't, I'm not into music, 
Um, but coding is a creative act, um, building is a creative act, website design, so lots of options. And if you can connect it to service, that would be even better. Activity hours, this is again physical fitness, um, developing the whole person, right? Um, I was definitely not a physically active person, and I'm still not. Um, so um, the most I did in high school was marching band. Um, and I think I would have really benefited from being kind of nudged in the direction of doing something physically active, just for my overall well-being um, and mental health. Um, so this can be something that you're already doing and wanting to extend um, the challenge and the rigor of that, um, or take up something new. I really encourage students to take up something new. Um, but it doesn't have to be just a sport. Um, it can also be yoga, which is great for mental health right now, um, gardening, um, and the idea that is listed as an activity. Um, experience. Um, we have a game just right here, which again I think is great for the overall person. So um, again, we'll go into more detail on classrooms as moving forward, but I think it's just a good point. Has to also some verification forms. Again, I'll talk about. Um, I'm going to go in the classrooms for the Friday before school break. Um, so if you're planning on skipping, I hope you aren't. Um, but you may have vacation, so certainly check in with me um, about that. Um, and those proposals, I would like to have our sophomores, this is just for our current sophomores, I like to have our current sophomores do that um, before they get to their junior year so they can hit the ground running their junior year regarding their hours. Um, and in full disclosure, I'm sure, sure you already saw, um, I am pregnant and I will be um, having my baby at the end of April, beginning of May time. So I want to make sure I have time to look at these past proposals, provide comments um, and assistance, and then I will be back for first day of school to help all of our students once they become juniors. So this will actually be April 8th. Because you guys have enough um, to, to complete those. Make sure you're talking and really considering your options. Okay. TOK, like we said, first year is going to be PE and CAS guidance. Um, great opportunity for students to get some um, much needed work done on those extended essays and do a really good job of those. I go into the classes and I talk about CAS as well as even college stuff at the end of the junior year. Theory of Knowledge in your senior year, um, it's a class, it's one of the most interesting classes. It has students answer the question, how do we know what we know, and really explore different areas of knowledge. Um, those areas being math, um, natural sciences, history. Um, and there is a, a, an internal, you know, uh, an external assessment component so that students are assessed on their TOK exhibition as well as their TOK paper, um, which if you do well on those, you can earn bonus points for your diploma. This is the lovely grid, which you probably can't read, but again, we'll post it. Um, depending on how well you do in your theory of, on your theory of knowledge assessments, as well as the extended essay, you can earn up to three bonus points on your diploma, which can be really helpful. Okay? Yeah, I know you guys um, have been here longer than seven o'clock, so we just um, certainly, if you have any questions, please let us know afterwards. Um, Getting an IQ diploma as a review, um, you can earn up to three bonus points with um, EE and math knowledge. You can't earn an E on either of those. If you do, you won't get the diploma. So we want to have an A to D. The diploma itself is at 24 points, with 12 of those as these being um, higher level points. And you have to make sure you meet your cash requirements. <coughs> Family conditions for any diploma, just want to make sure you go over these really quick. If you don't meet your class requirements, you don't get your diploma. If you have fewer than 24 points, you will not earn the diploma. An N, which typically um, means that there's been some sort of academic dishonesty, um, or you just failed to meet the requirements in one way or another, uh, would also um, mean that you wouldn't get the diploma. And E again, um, a word of regular theory and knowledge or extended essay would be um, grounds for not getting the diploma. If you earn a one, which is really, doesn't happen often, right? If you earn a one in a subject, that would mean you would get the diploma. Uh, if you have a two, if you earn a two on three or more time, uh, three or more assessments, uh, three or more exams, right? Um, you would also not get a diploma. But typically, this doesn't happen for our students. Um, if you're in that realm, you're probably not getting enough points anyway. Right? Additionally, if you have a three um, or below, it's been awarded four more times at a higher level or standard level. That would be grounds for not earning a diploma. This doesn't happen often either. It doesn't really happen often. 
Um, if you, again, are fewer than 12 points on higher level subjects, on the top three higher level subjects, if you're doing four higher level exams, you would not have the diploma. I would say this is probably what happens most often, is either this or students don't earn enough points. Okay? Candidates earn fewer than nine points on standard level subjects. Again, this doesn't happen often. And certainly if you have um, academic misconduct on any of the exams, that would mean you would not earn the diploma. For you all, I do want to, we typically go over college information during this session, but there's a lot going on with press registration. So I have a separate night for you all. Um, I'd like to have a night to talk with freshmen and sophomores about college planning. We want to make sure you're picking the right courses. We want you to be thinking ahead and making that for your plan. So I will talk specifically about those things and the timeline and things that you're looking out for on March 24th. Um, it's tentative to order. It's a Thursday after spring break. I definitely want to see you all before April. Um, and I will have an evening session in here. And so we'll talk about all those things. And I think it's great to, to really start thinking about college in. So I hope to see you then. For our registration, just a review when we're going in. So rising juniors, they are currently a sophomore. Rising sophomores, it means you're currently a freshman. And then we do have a Title I feedback survey. We are a Title I school, and so we'd like for you all to um, provide some feedback on how we can better serve you all. So that is all for us. Um, I hope we haven't fired your dreams too much. Um, but certainly, um, I know this is not the time to, uh, this is not necessarily going to retain all of the information, um, but we will have this posted. We will be in the classrooms. And certainly feel free to email or call us if anything else um, comes up. We go home, we look at the course registration cards once we get those to this week, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Um, we are here as a resource for you, and again, we are looking out for what's best for all of you and to prepare you for your university. This is the best university tech program in the area, and that's what, that's what our goal and purpose is. Okay? Thank you so much, everybody.